Hi, Philip. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the Miami Guides. There it goes. Hi, we were having we a go. little internet trouble, so I'm <laughs> glad it finally connected. Yeah. <laughs> Are you still calling from uh, Antarctica? <laughs> Not this time. Yeah, Not but... this week, but yeah. <laughs> we got it to work, though. Terrific. Well, nice to see you. Yeah, thank you for uh, yeah, connecting and uh, tuning in. Uh, I can't wait to hear more about your stories. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you for uh, yeah coming uh, to the Miami Guide Live. Uh, so uh, yeah, first of all, uh, congrats on everything you are, you guys are doing. You guys are doing an amazing job uh, traveling all over the world. And yeah, I think well, you're doing you. a great. Uh, for a great cause. Well, thank you. So, it's so tiring, you're, you're but it's the, great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you're the, the grandson of uh, yeah, Jacques Couston. That's right. That's right. The great, uh, yeah, the great advent adventure. And yeah, also your father was a adventure and filmmaker. I think you guys have an amazing family. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And it's, um, it's kind of why we're joining you today to talk a little bit about some of the mischief that we're up to uh, down in Miami in partnership with Hidden Worlds. So we're really excited about this project in Miami and, um, you know, really how it represents a new perspective and a new way to engage people around the ocean. Uh, it's been, as you said, you know, my life and Ashlyn, my wife now for the last decade that I dragged her away from her work as a journalist to, uh, to join me in all these adventures and telling these stories. And um, yeah, we're thrilled. I, I think tickets go on sale tonight. We're really excited about it um, for this, this project. Cause you know, the ocean is in trouble. That's, there's no mystery. Everybody knows that. Certainly we see it a lot in Miami. There's a lot of issues. I lived in Florida for several years. Um, and, uh, and, but there's a lot of things that we can do and we're excited about reaching people in new ways through food and entertainment and new technology and, um, and getting them engaged and excited. That's great. Uh, so yeah, Hidden World is opening next month, May. I think May 20th tickets are on sale. Uh, what are what are you hoping that uh, yeah people will get out of it? Uh, what they will take away from this uh, immersive experience of uh, hidden worlds? You know, I think it goes to the storytelling of our ocean. Um, obviously, people in Miami look and and are lucky enough to look at the ocean every day. Um, but but what we really wanted to connect with people and explain to them is just how important the ocean is to their life. Um, so yes, it is beautiful and it's, it can give you a sense of joy and a sense of hope and a sense of wonder, but it also is in charge of providing our climate because our, our ocean is actually what controls the climate around our planet. Um, it gives us fresh water because even though it's salt water, almost every single drop of precipitation that lands on land comes from the ocean. Um, and also the oxygen that we breathe is uh, over 50% of the oxygen that's available in our atmosphere is thanks to the ocean and the mighty tiny plants of, of phytoplankton. And a lot of people forget that. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really special to be opening this in Miami where it is a city that is so reliant and, and so in love with the ocean. Um, and that's, I think one of the reasons why we're so excited to come to Miami for this. But also it's this this experience is just the storytelling of the ocean and, and realizing that it's how connected we all are truly to our ocean every single minute of every single day, whether we live in Miami or we live in Ohio. Mm, yeah, 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 definitely. Miami is a, a, a great place. Uh, I live close by the ocean and I go there almost every day. I was there this morning. Uh -huh. uh, it's, yeah, it's beautiful. It's always a different scene. Um, yeah, Hidden World is about, uh, especially about the emotional connection. Uh, why is it so important uh, to yeah, create this emotional connection while, uh, yeah, while we all know the facts about it? Well, you know, it's, uh, uh, I remember my, my mother always told me growing up, uh, she spent 13 years on expedition with my grandfather and my father 
And um, she always told me, you know, information doesn't go this way. It doesn't go into our brain and then into our heart. It really starts in our heart for us to really feel something and be connected to it. My grandfather always said, you know, we only protect what we love and we only can love what we know. And so, uh, you know, Hidden Worlds is, I think, a new frontier of technology, of a, of a marriage between technology and experience and food, uh, which is one of our favorite things, food and and. Uh, but your and, stomach and is close drinks. to your heart. Yes, your stomach <laughs> is close, very close to your heart. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, it represents a new way of looking at how we engage and connect people and and make them love and, and, and enjoy the ocean and experience the ocean and everything that has to offer. Mm -hmm. And I think too, that it's really important for people to have this connection because when, when you think of serious, the serious events that are happening in our planet, it's, it's very scary and it makes us very anxious. And what's great is we wanted to make sure and, and us along with Daniel, the incredible mind between hidden, but behind hidden worlds is that people realize that there's hope and that there's still hope for our ocean and there's hope for our planet and there's solutions to helping our ocean. And that's also what is highlighted throughout this incredible experience, emotional, visual, sound experience. Culinary experience. Yeah, it's truly breaking um, boundaries. I mean, it, it, this is truly gonna be a, a, a once in a lifetime opportunity for people to have a fabulous night with dinner and drinks and friends. And, and magic and magic and unique storytelling. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we need everybody to care about the ocean. And that's what's so exciting is this is hopefully gonna bring, um, you know, ocean lovers to the experience, but also people that come to the experience will walk out ocean lovers. Yeah, and, and uh, it's, as Ashton said, it's definitely unlike anything anyone will have experienced ever before. This yeah. is the first of its kind. And we're actually gonna be there for the launch for the opening, opening night. night. Great. And very excited. You know, we've all been working on this for several years. And uh, Daniel has, has made it happen and, and brought it together to Miami for the first launch. And it's amazing. It's really represents a whole new approach to, to education and exploration and adventure. It's going to change the world. That's, yeah, that's great to hear. Uh, and also good to hear that there is still hope for our oceans. Uh, you guys are traveling all over the world and you, you see firsthand what, what is happening all around us. Uh, what advice do you have for uh, Miami? How can we do yeah, more for the environment and where can people uh, start? Well, one of, the, one of the most important things to do in Miami is to go down to the beach, go to Biscayne Bay, um, you know, and, and not just kind of the, 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 the tourist beaches, but there is so many places to go kayaking through mangroves and like really explore the wonder of the Everglades. There's so much in Miami to see and do um, and recognize that, you know, a lot of those places are in trouble and threatened. I mean, you know, news headlines, I'm sure we've seen down in Florida, you all seen down in Florida, manatees, for example, are, you know, dying at unprecedented numbers. We have, you know, obviously pollution and sea level rise is a huge issue in Miami, right? It's You're at the forefront of climate change because, you know, what's causing sea level rise is warming ocean. As, warm, as stuff warms, it expands. That's yeah. basic thermodynamic physics, right? So as the ocean warms, it expands, and we're seeing that flooding and these big problems in Miami. And so y'all are at the forefront of this issue. And um, first, enjoy and experience and connect to the ocean. And then... Make sure that you're demanding that your politicians are doing the right thing. I don't care if it's a Republican or Democrat. It should not matter when we talk about protecting the ocean. We have waste issues and pollution issues and all sorts of things down in southern Florida. Uh, and we have to demand that, you know, the governor ran on a, on a pretty, for a Republican, a pretty strong pro-environmental message. And he hasn't delivered everything that he's promised. There's an election coming up. And um, as voters, we need to demand that our state government, that uh, federal government, you know, your representatives in Congress are, are delivering and, and your local representatives. Absolutely. And also think that because you all are on the, the battlegrounds, literally, of for the ocean, please remember that while plastic pollution is awful and gets so much press and it is horrible that we have uh, eight. Hundred eight million metric tons of ocean entering our ocean every single year. Ocean, Thank you. Of plastic entering <laughs> our ocean every single year. But also remember that that what you do in your daily life 
truly usually ends up in the ocean. So your, from your shampoos and your conditioners to your cleaning products, that's usually going to end up in the ocean. What you put on your yard will end up in the ocean. Um, so just be just in your everyday life. Don't, you don't have to go out, go home and throw away everything in your house. Please don't do that. But next time you need something, look, just take a moment and read the label and, and really truly think, is there a better option for the, for the ocean, for this one purchase I'm going to make. Um, and that truly adds up to making a big difference. Um, I mean, even the clothes that you buy, try and not buy clothes that are made out of plastic. Because a lot of people don't realize that, that mm. nylon and, and rayon and acrylic is plastic. Oftentimes, yeah. Oftentimes. So, you know, just every, you know, next time you make a purchase, just try to make a better purchase for the ocean. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so basically, yeah, st start at home and then uh, and be yeah. Uh, yeah, careful with plastic, definitely. That's a good advice. Uh, so I was reading uh, that you recently started a new brand, uh, Seaweed Naturals. Uh, can you tell us something how that uh, came about and, and why did you create it? Yeah, well, as Philippe was saying, it's so important for, for people to make changes in their lives. It's so important for us to hold politicians accountable for their actions, but also one big, huge sector that's missing is, is businesses. And businesses can do so much for the environment in a positive and in a negative way. So for Philippe and I, we were always trying to figure out, you know, we, we've always wanted to do a, a, a brand and we just really didn't know what to do. And after years of thinking about what to do, we decided uh, we wanted to build a brand that helped grow the blue economy, which really is the how we use our ocean. Um, and we wanted to build that in a positive way. Uh, and we love uh, seaweed and how seaweed can actually um, help the ocean. Because as a movement, we need to stop talking about sustainability because nobody wants to sustain the ocean the way that it is. Nobody wants to sustain the Everglades the way that they are right now or Biscayne Bay. We want to make it better and we wanna restore it and help regenerate it. So we looked at seaweed and how powerful that can be to restore the ocean to healthy levels, to uh, absorb carbon and help combat climate change, to bring oxygen into the ocean. As you all know, that was one of the big reasons that Biscayne was having a problem last summer and hopefully will not have that problem this summer. Um, so we decided to start a brand called Seaweed Naturals. And we wanted it to be an, a brand that an impact brand that can change the world and, and truly change the ocean. Uh, so we actually are combining land and sea, which means we are combining um, seaweed and cannabis of all things. Uh, and we're starting out here in California. Um, and is it legal in, in, in Florida yet? CBD, I think it is. CBD but... is legal, but not, yeah, not but medical not marijuana. Sorry. Not Although yet. everybody, yeah. Yeah, everybody's smoking it, but exactly. Oh, yeah. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're only operating in legal states, of course. Yeah. Um, we're starting yeah. in California with the wellness line, and um, um, it's essentially a cannabis wellness brand. So bombs and tinctures and and some sleep gummies, things like that, and uh, um, combining it with with seaweed and algae from uh, omega threes oh, yeah. from algae extracts. And uh, so first of its kind, um, and we'll be expanding to other states someday yeah. coming to Florida, we hope, when it, once um, it is legal there. It's just, again, a matter of time. And um, uh, yeah, so that's a new idea. It's, again, embracing that idea of hope, right? That the right. fact that, listen, we have tools at our disposal that can help restore the ocean, that can help restore nature. And, um, and so we need to start businesses and we need to do, you know, initiatives, not just nonprofits, but initiatives that, um, that are businesses that can, that can help support that. Um, and so that's really what CB Naturals is all about. And that's really why we're so excited too about Hidden Worlds, because it's the same idea. How can we use business to change the world? Mm. Yeah, yeah. And create a yeah. great, amazing experience while we do it. Yeah, yeah and edu educate them as well. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you're also involved in other organizations, uh, Earth Echo. Okay. Can you tell us something about Earth Echo? Sure. So Earth Echo International is my nonprofit, uh, started 16 years ago. We do a lot of work actually in Southern Florida. We've got a lot of youth leaders, young people. We've worked with Miami-Dade um, uh, public schools for several years. We have uh, all sorts of education programs, teacher training, youth leadership training in, um, uh, in South Florida and all over the world, frankly, 
in over 100 countries. And it's really focused on building a youth movement to restore and protect the ocean, because we recognize that if we want the kind of political and social change that we need, then what we need to do is we need to focus on education. My grandfather always said that we cannot talk about conservation before talking about education. And so that's a big yeah. part of what we do at Earth Echo, and we're, we're leading the the charge to build that global youth movement for the ocean and really excited about it. It's honestly one of the most inspiring things that I get to do that we both get to do is work with the young people at Earth Echo yeah. and see how driven this new generation is to build a better world than we and our, and our forefathers did. Mm. And, and what are some of the, yeah, the recent happenings uh, around Earth Echo? What's so Earth Echo, you know, man, actually, one of the things, so anybody that's watching right now, we just every year we have a, a, a program called the Youth Leadership Council, which is open to about 12, a dozen, 15 or so, 13 or 14 to 24 year old um, young people to, to join. And we put them through a, a pretty rigorous like uh, application process. And then those that are chosen to join our Youth Leadership Council are have the opportunity to join us on expeditions, to be part of uh, a lot of training and mentorship. We spend time on Capitol Hill. We do lots of, give them support and internships, externships, grants, all sorts of things. So um, that application process just opened. We also have an application for our Water Challenge Ambassadors, which is also available to young people 14 and older um, to, be, to be really get our support for them to engage in, in protecting the ocean in their communities and also have mentorship and, and training. And water. Don't have to be near the ocean. That's right. It. It's anywhere. <laughs> um, and so those are two things that we just uh, opened the applications for again this year at earthecho.org. And, um, but also, you know, we have all sorts of cool programs going on. Uh, some of our, several of our youth representatives are at the Palau Ocean Conference right now. Um, we are doing all the programs with Man City and Pep Guardiola in Spain and in, you know, and, and doing projects in seagrass restoration in Italy. And we are currently um, involved in programs in, with the Brewers baseball team in, in, in Wisconsin. We are doing um, programs in California, in Florida all over with teachers and training and um, it's really, really exciting and, and hopeful work uh, and really what keeps me going. Awesome. Well, that's amazing what you guys are doing. Uh, congrats. And yeah, uh, we will share that definitely with our audience as well so that they can sign up. Uh, out of all Absolutely. of the places that you are, uh, well, you guys are traveling all, all over the world. What's your favorite place uh, to visit? Well, I have to say, I was very proud because while I am not a Cousteau by birthright, I am a Cousteau through marriage, but I was able to beat my husband to Antarctica. So before I turned 40, I was I got all, uh, all the continents visited, uh, and I've actually been twice to Antarctica now, and Philippe has only been once. So that's a little bit of my bragging rights that I like to <laughs> remind him of at oh, any time right. that and, I can. And I think it's terrific. <laughs> um, she's a bigger explorer than I am now. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things we were just, uh, we did, we were literally, you mentioned that early on, we yep. were in Antarctica about six weeks ago. Yep. And um, it's... Was it, it feels like Six, it was like last weeks. week. I know. It feels like yeah. like it was just a, just a day. We ago. also have two little kids. Yeah. So we're always like, what day? We're what time, time is it? What is it? <laughs> um, and Antarctica is, you know, there's so many amazing places around the world. It's impossible to pick just one. But Antarctica was one of those places that was truly inspiring and, and worrisome, I must say, because, you know, Antarctica is at the forefront of the changes around climate uh, that, that's happening in the world. But it was an amazing place. It is an amazing place. And um, that, that certainly shot to the top of my list after that, that expedition there, yeah. So I'd say Antarctica, Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands, um, uh, the Red Sea, and the Everglades. Yeah, I, you know, I lived in Florida for four years. Oh, wow. As much as we've lost, you know, the Everglades used to be 9 million acres, and now it's less than three. So we've wow. lost a lot of the Everglades. It's not what it's at, not even close to what it used to be, but it's still an extraordinary place. And I think a lot of people in Florida take it for granted and don't realize that mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's so, as special as it is. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are your kids uh, joining your adventures as well, or are they staying? Uh, as much as possible. One of them is seven months, and one is uh, just under three. So um, um, they're they're starting to join a little bit, coming out of COVID and all that craziness. But uh, but uh, we think the three-year-old, because she'll be oh she'll be yeah she'll just be three. We think she's going to come with us yeah, to, Miami her to Miami for the for opening this, night. For the opening ah, night. Yeah. Cool, cool. So they will continue the. Gusto legacy, I guess. Absolutely. We hope so. <laughs> All right. 
Well, thank you guys uh, so much for joining and I can't wait uh, for the Hidden Worlds next next month. And uh, yeah, it's an yes. experience. And make sure you. everybody, tickets are going on sale and yep. go to Hidden Worlds um, on Instagram and find out all the information. I'm sure you're going to put links to all that stuff. We encourage everybody to get tickets. There's only a handful of night. them because um, it's a limited time that it's going to be in Miami. So please join us uh, for the opening night, for any night that you can at, at, at the event. It's it's truly unlike anything that's ever been created and staged before. It's going to be great. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. And, uh, yeah, keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you. We're we'll thrilled. see you in Miami. We'll see you in Miami. Definitely. We'll see you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye.